Second Samuel chapter 7. And it came to pass when the king sat in his house, and he was built of cedars, chapter 6. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. There's peace. Very few times there's been peace in Jerusalem. There'll be a short peace during David's time, and there'll be a peace during Solomon's time. Until Solomon goes against God. That the king said to Nathan, this is the prophet. This is one of David's be best prophets. This is a man that went up to the king and said, Thou art the man. You don't just do that. See now, I dwell in a house of cedar. But the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. We talked about that chapter 6. So David looks out his window. He sees the tent he built for the ark. And he looks at his own house and says, You know what? I am dwelling a lot better than what God's dwelling. This has to change. I've got cedar and there's curtains down there for God. This is David's heart. This is not to be taken lightly. And Nathan said to, and Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that's in thy heart, for the Lord is with thee. Now, Nathan already knows. David wants to build something grander for God Almighty. And it came to pass that night that the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, Thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build an house for me to dwell in? That's what David wants to do. Whereas I have not dwelt in any house since the time that I brought up the children of Israel out of Egypt. That's kind of interesting. I dwelt in no house but since they came out of Egypt. Was there a house before they came out of Egypt before that Passover night? Since the Passover night. And when they went through the wilderness, and when they came to Mount Sinai, Exodus 20, and to the close of Exodus, that's when they started to build the tabernacle. That's when they set up the, the furniture of the tabernacle, the brazen altar, the, the wash basin, the table, the candlestick, the incense altar, the mercy seat. At that point, at the late end of Exodus, is when now here's where God is dwelling with Israel. Up to then, there has been no place for God. And this is where people get the mistake. They think today, church is the presence of God, and it's not. And yet, here in the Old Testament, that, that curtain, that mercy seat, was the presence of God. For the Jews only, and no church. And it's funny how they will say that, you know, with the church where the pastor is, that's where the altar is. Well, the altar in the Old Testament, it was inside the most holy place. And there's only one man that went in there twice, one day throughout the whole year. And when that high priest went in there, that is the presence of God. In that room on the mercy seat between the cherubim. And David's saying that this house that God is at, where he is dwelling in the monks of Israelites, it's a curtain. I am in cedar. God deserves better. And God says, well, who are you? I've never asked anybody to, to build a house. And yet we are reminded that the presence of God is in that tabernacle amongst the ark. Only for the children of Israel. Now today, our presence, the most holy place, is our heart where the Holy Spirit dwells. Even to this day, but I have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle. So you get that, that God was in that holy place, the most holy place, for the nation of Israel. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel... Spake I a word with any of the tribes of Israel? 
whom I commanded to feed my people Israel, saying, Why build ye not me in a house of cedar? Has anybody, have I told anybody to, for me to build a house? Have I said to anybody, hey, you know, why you guys haven't built me a cedar house? That tabernacle was temporary. It was as they traveled from Mount Sinai to the promised land. They are in the promised land now. They've had a whole realm of judges. They've had one king. Now the second king, David. And you mean after all those judges, after that one king, Saul, and now David, it takes to David. I think God deserves better. It's been a long time. Judges has spoken about, and I'm not going to call it completely, uh, but every man did that was right in his own eyes. And David is looking at God with his heart saying, God deserves better. And God is not rebuking David. He, he's saying, listen, no one's ever asked. And I have never commanded anybody. And what you're thinking of, David, is coming from your heart. No one told God told no one to do what David is thinking right now. Now therefore, so shalt thou say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from a sheep coat. That's the only, there's one other place, and we're going to look at that later, First Chronicles 17. And that's the first place that sheep coat shows up. That's where you take care of sheep. And we'll see it in First Chronicles 17, the only other place. From following the sheep. David took care of his sheep. David fought for his sheep. David cared for his sheep. To be a ruler over my people, over Israel. And this would be the type of David and type of Jesus Christ as the good shepherd, John chapter 10. With Israel being the sheep. Another place where David's a type of Jesus Christ. I took you from the sheep. Jesus Christ takes care of the sheep. I was with thee, whithersoever thou wentest. That is so with Jesus, with God. Wherever Jesus went, God was with him. And I have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight. That is yet to happen at the second advent. And it's amazing how God was with Jesus the first advent, but not all the enemies have been cut off yet. And in between, I was with you while you were on this earth, 33 and a half years. And the second advent, we get care with your enemies. There's the church age in there. And where do you see, the, what words do you see the church age? I don't see no words. Where's the words for the church age? And when the Jew looks through the book of Samuel and they look at the Old Testament, they will see a space and say, well, what is this church age? You will see the first advent of Jesus Christ, and then you will see the second advent of Jesus Christ. And realize that space there, sometimes a period, sometimes a comma, sometimes a colon, would represent at least now 2,000, if not more, years of a church age. And have made thee a great name. Who doesn't know David? The other day, looking at, and there's a movie of David and Goliath. There's a movie of David and Bathsheba. There's a statue called David. And yet also a great name is Jesus Christ. A name above all names. Greater than David's name. Most people have heard the name of Jesus. It's a popular name that in Mexico they named their children Jesus, which means Jesus, that are in the earth. So there, verse 9 is a typology of David and Jesus Christ. More I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and plant them, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and that's where they are now, in the promised land, David in Jerusalem. This is the place that God has been writing for since Exodus to now 
the place where I will put my name is now coming to be. In a few more chapters, we will find the title deed of Jerusalem. David paying for that plot of land that Jesus Christ paid for. David buys it with, I think it's silver. Jesus Christ buys it for blood. I will plant them that they may dwell in the place of their own and have and move no more. Now you know that's future. Man, Israel moved out before World War I. The land prepared them. They came in World War II. They're in the land. They're moving their borders so they can have peace with the PLO. They're moving their borders so Jordan can get in there. And they're all over the world still. But there is coming a day under Jesus Christ in that land. Jesus Christ under the throne of David will sit in that land in Jerusalem. And that land will belong to the Jews. And they will not ever be dispersed out of it again. Neither shall the children of the wickedness afflict them anymore. They're being afflicted today. They got kids who are going to school with an AK-7 strapped to their back. For protection they may be sitting out having a little tea or a little coffee and talking to a girlfriend talking to a boyfriend and that little table next thing you know it may explode the building because of a bomb a man with a bomb strapped to him or a woman today and let's see Amos chapter 9 verse 13 this is yet all future and this is all to David this is what we call the sure mercies of David. Amos 9.13 Israel will be a, a fruitful, wonderful land that it's not today. They're in rejection of God today. Behold, the days come, save the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes shall... The trader grapes him that sows seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof. They shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them. I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which I have given them, Save the Lord God. That's a future reference. That's when Jesus Christ comes back as their Messiah. That land is going to be a fruitful land. Not yet. In verse 11. And as since the time that I commanded judges. Book of Judges. To be over my people Israel. And I caused thee to rest from all thy enemies. Also, the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. All right. In the book of Judges, God gave a judge and there was victory over those enemies. Israel will sin. They would cry out to God. And God would answer and send another judge and give them victory. And I make thee an house. He's talking to David now. The sure mercy. The covenant of David. And when thy days be fulfilled. And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, death. I will set up thy seed, Solomon. I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels. And I will establish his kingdom. We know that's Solomon. He shall build an house for my name, the temple, Solomon's temple. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever with a lot of breaks in between a lot of wrong kings right now there is no throne right now there is no king right now you have to have the virgin birth of the king of kings and the lord of lords and there is no king and yet when jesus christ sets up that throne will be forever and that throne is david watch this i will be his father and he shall be my son that's Jesus. That's Solomon. Nowhere else in the Old Testament do you see that God ever says, I'm the father of a particular man. Now today, we are the children of God. 
Solomon's a type of, of church. J David, a type of Jesus Christ. Solomon's going to sin. We're going to sin and do sin. If he committed iniquity, that is not Jesus. And we know Solomon falls for he gets the horses out of Egypt. He gets a thousand wives. He gets worshiping all kinds of gods. I will chasten. That's the first time that word shows up, chasing him with a rod of men. And one of them men is Jeroboam. There are two men mentioned when we get there. One of them is Jeroboam. And then he ends up splitting the kingdom into two with Rehoboam. This will come to be. And chasten. Chasten. Iniquity. Let's see Isaiah 53 5. Let's look at Isaiah 53 5. Let's see how the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, does not pray scrabble with words. He doesn't get a bunch of letters on his tile and say, well, what, what good word can I do from this? Now, Isaiah 53 is the suffering Messiah. Now, this thing here, I don't know these dates. They know better than I do these dates. Second Samuel, it is said B.C. 1042. Okay? I'm not going to say it's right. I'm not going to say it's wrong. Isaiah 53 says B.C. 712. I'm not going to say it's right. I'm not going to say it's wrong. I don't. I haven't studied years. Now watch what we see in Isaiah 53, 5, almost, I'm going to say 300 years later. Okay? Isaiah 53, 5. Behold, he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. That's one of the words. The chastisement, there's the other word, of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We'll run that right back to what we've read right now. If he committed iniquity, is iniquity, Isaiah 53. I will chast chasten, there's chastisement. It's talking about Jesus. It's talking about our sin. Christ didn't sin, but we sin. Solomon's going to sin. And God says, I'm going to kick his butt. And I'm going to send two men into his life. With the rod of men. That rod in the Bible is a chastening stick. Used for the behind of children to be taught properly. Which is called child rearing. And God tells David, with your son, that is my son. Nowhere has that been said. Not Isaac, not Jacob, not Judah has been said, that is my son by God. God tells David Solomon, and if that boy goes wrong as, as my son, I am going to get the rod out and I'm going to spank that boy. I'm going to do it with men and two men show up. With the stripes. We saw that in Isaiah 53 5. Of the children of men. Who gave the stripes upon Jesus Christ back? The children of men. It was the Jews under the priest. And it was also the Roman government that beat him and put the crowns upon him. So the children of men is. Jews and Gentiles. Look at that, how that is worded. Look at Jesus Christ in 7, verse 14, 7, 7, 7. Three sevens. Isn't that interesting? Why couldn't that have been chapter 8? Why could it have been cha uh, chapter 7, verse 11? But, now watch this. Watch us. My mercy, God's mercy shall not depart away from him. I can go about and do wicked sins. I can go get other gods. I'm a child of God. I can go get other gods. I can run to the world for help. But God's mercy is not going to escape me because I am his son. Now he may chasten me. He may send correction after me. But I am never going to be forsaken. I am not ever going to be broken of that family. 
God has adopted Solomon to be his son as God has adopted me to be his son. Solomon by David, me by Jesus Christ. Look at the typology for David and Solomon. Now let's go to Hebrews chapter 12 and see Hebrews chapter 12 AD 64 how many years is that after this is written and 12 6 this is Christian Hebrews 12 6 for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scorneth every son whom he receiveth. Jeroboam, that other man, I forget what his name is now, they are correction by God. And if a Christian, one is saved, whose God is their father by the adoption of the Holy Spirit, if you do wrong, God is going to beat your butt because he is your father and he loves you. And believe me, I know a son enough that you correct him and you correct him and they still may do wrong. And then he gets a bigger paddle up. And he gets your attention. And some don't even hear to that. But my mercy shall not depart away from him. As I took it from Saul, Saul is in hell. God says for Saul, my mercy is done with you. Whom I put away before thee. Look, at, look what God said. I took care of Saul. I got rid of him. He died without mercy. He's in hell today. Burning. And thy house, David's house, and thy kingdom. Now thy house is the family of David. The kingdom is the political rule of Israel. Shall be established forever before thee. And thy throne, there's a royalty shall be established forever and Jesus will sit on that throne. According to all these words and according to all this vision, so did Nathan speak unto David. So, with the Davidic covenant of verses 8 to 17, it's the glorious kingdom of Christ. The house is the family. The throne is the royal authority. The kingdom is that sphere of, of rule. And let us take us now. Keep your place in 2 Samuel. Let's take our place as the 1 Chronicles 17. Keep your place somehow in 2 Samuel. Because we will come back and work back and forth. And very, you know, with these videos and audios that you can rewind me. And in First Chronicles seventeen four. First Chronicles seventeen four. We have First Chronicles seventeen four. Go and tell David my servant. Nathan verse three. Thus saith the Lord. Thou shalt not build me a house to dwell in. We'll look at these verses again. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day I brought up Israel unto this day. There's only one place that God has dwelt before Israel. And that's in heaven, capital H. And what God is saying here, if I am correct, that his presence left the heavenly throne in heaven. And came down to that, oh, uh, that ark, the mercy seat. Is that not a type of Jesus Christ that God left the throne and came to Israel? And you deny the fact that some people say that Jesus is not God. God says, not only did I dwell in heaven, but I dwelt in that curtain too. 
Not only did I dwell in heaven, but I dwelt in a body of flesh, the Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Go and tell David my servant. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt not build me in a house to dwell in. For I have not dwelt in a house since the day that I brought up Israel unto this day. But have gone from tent to tent. And from one tabernacle to another tabernacle. Looks like they had to repair that tabernacle that Moses built. Wheresoever I have walked. With all Israel, spake I a word to any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to feed my people. Judges were to feed the people. Saying, Why have ye not built me a house of cedars? Now therefore, thus say, thus, now therefore, that thus shalt thou say to my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheepcote. There's the only two places that word is. Even from fallen sheep, that thou shouldest bear rule over my people, Israel. And I have been with thee, whither so thou hast walked. And I have cut off thy enemies before thee. And I have made thee a name like the name of great men that are in the earth. Also I will ordain a place for my people, Israel, and will plant them, and they shall dwell in their place, and shall be moved no more. Neither shall the children of wickedness waste them any more, as at the beginning. And since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel, moreover I will subdue all thine enemies. Second Advent. Furthermore, I will tell thee that the Lord will build thee in house, David, and it shall come to pass. When thy days be expired, thou must go to be with thy fathers. That I will raise up thy seed after thee, which shall be of thy sons. He's got many of them. And I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house, and I will establish his throne forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. I will not take, I will not take my mercy away from him. As I took it from him, no, he mentioned Saul, him, that was before thee. But I will settle him in my house and in my kingdom forever. That's under Jesus. And his throne shall be established forevermore. According to all these words and according to all the vision, so did Nathan speak to David. Now that's interesting. Now, comparing going back to 2 Samuel and 1 Chronicles 17. It says in 2 Samuel 7, 5. It says, it's a question in 7, 5. Shall thou build me a house? In 17, 4 of 1 Chronicles, it says, thou shalt not build me a house. Now, God's going to tell David, you shed blood. You kill people. You can't do it. And there's no rebuke. In 17.5 of Samuel, it's a question mark. In 17.4, it's a colon. And when we get to first Sam, 2 Samuel 7.7, 7, and in 1 Chronicles 17.6, he says, In all the places where I walk with all the children of Israel, Spank I a word. And 17.6 it says, Wherefore I walked with all the Israel, spank I a word to any of the judges of Israel. Those were the leaders in the time of judges. And God is saying, listen, did I speak to any of them? The leaders at the time? 2 Samuel 7.10 He says, Moreover, I will appoint a place for my people. 17.9, First Chronicles, I will ordain. Ordain means to appoint scripture with scripture, to put in office. So see, the Bible, it's its own dictionary. I will appoint, I will ordain a place. It also says in 
the children of wickedness afflict. In 17.9 it says the children of wickedness waste. Afflict is to put to waste. It's to destroy. Get rid of. Throw out. In 7.11 of Second Samuel. Thee to rest. I will cause thee to rest. In First Chronicles 17, 10, it says, I will subdue all thy enemies. It's called rest. Subdue again. Here's a Bible, here's a Bible definition. Subdue is to rest. 17, 12, it says, And thou shalt sleep with thy fathers. And in 17, 11, it says, that thou must go to be with thy fathers. Abraham's bosom. David say, and one of the fathers he has is Abraham. And again in 712 it says thy bowels. Now doctors will say that is a function of your body. In 1711 it says which shall be of thy sons. Inside bowels is inside the man's seed. It comes from inside the body. It comes inside of the woman. It's not a body function. It's a placement inside your body. And again, in 1715, it says from Saul. And in 1713, it says from him. Chronicles doesn't even mention Saul's name. And then we see again, recorded twice, that Nathan spoke everything that God had him to speak. And we're going to be doing that, Lord willing, now on. We're going to look at the cross references that we have, and we're going to see definitions. We're going to see more information that was not in present. And this is like the Gospels. Why is there four Gospels? Why does it seem like the Gospels match? Because there's a different person writing. It's a different person seeing it a different way. It's the Holy Spirit saying, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. I want you to... This book over here has a little more information. This book here will give you information that you didn't get elsewhere. And we've got definitions. So it's going to be an interesting study as now we pick up 2 Samuel 1 Kings, 2 Kings, and the Chronicles. We're going to study it this way. 